All right, here it comes. All right, some people can really play it. Otto can really play it. <laughs> Welcome to Show and Tell. This is a series we created because of this, um, this truly odd time that we all find ourselves in. Uh, all in our homes, staying put, staying away from each other. But we thought that maybe this would be a good time to try a show where we asked interesting people we know to show us the stuff that they are now stuck with, whether they're artists or collectors or just people who happen to have something weird they want to share. This show is about showing us and telling us that story. So today I'm really excited to have Graham Otteson on the show. Uh, I, I've worked with Graham a little bit before, and Graham is an, an artist, a sculptor, a gardener, a uh, creator of truly incredible gourd art, and the proprietor and force behind Gourdlandia, uh, which is the greatest gourd-related place in the world, <laughs> I'll say, uh, with, great, with confidence, really. Uh, so without further ado, Graham, welcome to the show. Thanks. So maybe you could start by just telling us again sort of who you are and what you do and then what you're going to be showing us today. Okay, I'm Graham Otteson. I'm a gourd artist here at Gourdlandia and I thought I'd show you a little bit about how I do my artwork from start to finish. We are in Gourdlandia. Gourdlandia is my studio. I grow gourds right out there and I have a little shop right here and I'm a couple miles up the hill from the city of Ithaca. And uh, yeah, it's my happy space. And it's just 200 yards from my home. So it's very convenient. Is it a good thing to be kind of stuck uh, at home so close to Gordlandia? Is it, are you happy to be able to be accessing the shop? I am so happy. I'm so happy. I'm getting some really uh, concentrated, really focused time to do my artwork, which is great. Like what kinds of things are you going to show us? Well, one thing I want to show you is a thing that scares people off right at the start, is, and that is that gourds go through a very awkward phase while they're drying. They look pretty nasty. Shall I show you now? You know what? Yes, let's get into it. Show me, show me, show me this thing you've got. Here I've got to show you a gourd that I just pulled out of the shed this, just this morning. It um, clearly looks kind of nasty, right? It's it, skin is peeling. <laughs> it doesn't it's look got amazing. mold on it. It's nasty. And the thing I want you to know is that this gourd is just fine because underneath there, it's just the outer surface that's getting a little moldy, that, just that skin of the gourd. But underneath there's this beautiful hard shell. And then where the mold was, you're going to see these beautiful patterns on the gourd like that. So is it, is it the mold that creates that, that patterning? That modeling, yep. That's what the mold does. All right, well, I don't, maybe you don't have an object. There was going to be, I was going to see if you had anything that you thought could stump me. I wonder if there's a tool that you might not even remember what we do with it. Let's see. Hold on a second. Hold on Probably. a second. I do know what this is because I remember using it and I, I like loved it. It's, it stuck in my head. I used it to make. All right. Right here. Because it's like a step drill. So it's, it's just a step little, drill. Like, it's bigger and bigger and bigger. That is so, it's such yeah. a cool. And then, oh, another thing that people like to see is the little mini saw. It's a little mini jigsaw. So you wouldn't necessarily even know that this guy opens up. Yeah. Because that's such a narrow little cut. What is the name of that saw? Well, it's a Micromark gourd saw. It's actually marketed as a gourd saw, believe it or not. How? The market for a gourd saw cannot be big enough to sustain an entire specialized tool. I mean, I, apparently it is, but, but... I know. Who else is using the gourd saw? Like, I There's mean, a lot of us gourd artists. There's a whole society, the American Gourd Society. Yeah, so... Do you want to see how it works? Shall I open yes. up a gourd? Please, of course. Good, uh, good, good safety. The gear is going on. Now. Okay, check this out. Gourd guts. 
what is in there? What am I seeing inside of, what is inside of that gourd? This, this was an unopened gourd, obviously. Nobody opened. else has ever seen the inside of this prior to us. <laughs> and, and what are we seeing? What is that? It's always different when you open up a gourd, but there's always seeds in it and the gourd guts. And inside there, there's a bunch of seeds. This is a really good show and tell, right, Dylan? <laughs> no one's kidding. <laughs> All right, so there's seeds in there. They're not always so 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 nicely tucked away like this. Oh, I see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, yeah, there's in, a ton. They're kind of in there. Yeah, there's a ton in there. Could you plant new gourds with those seeds? I assume so. Yes, you could plant new gourds with these seeds, but the gourds cross pollinate all over the place. So if I just plant willy nilly seeds that I get out of a gourd that I didn't prevent the cross pollination with, oh my gosh, this one might end up looking like, uh, like, hold on, like this one. Can you see it, Dylan? <laughs> You see it? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that would be, that's a surprising, uh, that would not be what you were expecting. Right. I mean, honestly, oh they, they, they cross pollinate all over the place. Graham, how long, how long is that gourd? Is that, that's got to be some kind of like record holding long gourd. Six that's feet, two inches. And, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a record here at Gourdlandia anyway, for sure. It's the longest one we ever grew. But I wanted to, t to let you and everybody know that this year I've been saving seeds. So preventing the cross-pollination. What you do if you want to um, keep your seeds pure is you go out around late afternoon and you look for what, the, what females are going to open on the plant that you want to preserve. And then you isolate the flower. It's a little mesh bag. And you just go to the female flower, right? And you go zip like that, and it can it can still breathe in there, but the bugs can't get the, get into it. So you're isolating it uh, from pollution from pollen from other gourds. Can I just say this is social distancing for gourds? It's sort of you know what I mean. Like that is what you're describing is keeping them from interacting for one another. Right. But what am I about to describe next is what you do with your paintbrush. At 10 o'clock at you night. You become the bug. You become a giant. You become bug. the bug, right? You're out there. It's 10 o'clock at night. You got your headlamp on and you got your paintbrush and you're going from the male flowers to the female flowers. And then you got to take the bag again over the female zoop, so nobody else gets in. And then what we did in December was we opened up these gourds to harvest the seeds. And I have those seeds available for free. So if you go to Gordlandia.com, you'll see a seeds page and you just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and I send you some pure seeds for free. You're becoming like sort of like Graham Gord seed, like you know, so <laughs> your, 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 uh, your moniker from yeah. here on out. Yeah. Uh, what else do you have to show us? I would love to see another, another thing that if you might. Another share. thing? Yeah, what do you got? What, okay, what's something you've been working things. on? I got things. I got lamps. I got musical instruments. Hey, musical instruments, yes. So, can you see it all right? Mm hmm This is um, a manipulated gourd. So, the gourds um, have the, the stiff shell on them, but in the very beginning, just two or three days after the gourd was pollinated, it's still pliable. And if you're lucky, you can tie a knot in it. So this is how you know, this is the kind of like, you've graduated to a higher degree of difficulty when you're tying gourd knots. Yeah. 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 What does it sound like when you, can you, is it? All right, here it comes. All right. Some people can really play it. Otto can really play it. <laughs> I, it's got a, you know, it's got just a, a whole, the tricky part about making this was cleaning out the inside. So what else are you working on? What else are you spending time uh, during this, this time at home, time in the studio? What are you focused on? I've got the, the uh, floor lamps. I've been going bigger. So the floor lamps. Yeah, yeah. What about, I like your little rabbit. Can you carry that over and just show us? This one? Yeah, that's a sweet. He's not plugged in, <laughs> but he moves. <laughs> so how many gourds is that? Okay, that's... Uh, uh, two banana banana gourds for the ears, and that's a little dipper gourd for the head, 
and a Copper Canyon canteen for the body. How does that work? Why, why is it bobbling? What is, bo- what is keeping- Actually, Did I tell you the secret? Is it counterweighted? <laughs> yeah, tell us the secret, yeah. It's a string. It's just balancing. Uh, the head is hanging. The head mechanism is balanced by a little string that hangs from here. And then there's like a little counterweight in here. Uh-huh. And if you want, I can send you the tutorial. <laughs> I would like that. I still haven't started growing gourds yet. It's not, we're, we're, we're getting our garden going, but I think gourds still feel a little bit outside of our, our range of ability. I'll send you some seeds. Okay, send me seeds. <laughs> All right. Every time I, yeah, each time we, we talk, I like, you pull me a little bit deeper, a little bit farther into the gourd world. So this is, we made this together. You yeah. helped me. I used that little saw, the little gourd saw to cut these out, and I used that step thing, and now it is, uh, it is a real prized possession in my house. I'm so glad it's being used. That's terrific. Isn't that something yeah. to be able to make something and then use it like that? I love it. Yeah. It is really, it is really delightful. If you have something else you'd like to share, be happy to. Well, I could, sh- if you want, I can show you the book. Yes, please. Let's look at the book and then that'll be a good thing to end on. So uh, a while back, quite a while back when I was just uh, getting into gourds, I wrote this. Everybody was wanted to find out about how to grow them. So I wrote a book. It's a limited edition. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. That's great. So inside is all about how to grow grow gourds and all that. By limited edition, you mean of of one. Limited edition of one, yeah. right? <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking this time to show us these incredible things and and bring us into your world a little bit. Well, thanks, Dylan. Thanks for coming to visit again. Of course, uh, anytime. I can't wait until I can come back and and bring the family and yeah, right. The kids Great. can see the gourds and we can make some stuff, and I look forward to it. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for watching the show, part of our Wonder From Home project. And let us know who you think we should talk to next. If you think that's you, please let us know in the comments and tell us uh, the kinds of things you want to share and show and tell about. And finally, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.